should we speak to our offering? We should speak to our offering with words of edification. Amen. So imagine if your child comes home with a bad report card, you would rather speak words of edification rather than telling your child to give up. Amen. Even, even the same as if you're planting a garden, you make sure that you change the soil, you water it, you make sure that it has sunlight, you do all these things so that you can edify its growth and to ensure its growth. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we ought to use our offerings and speak to our offerings as if we were another person. Amen. So we can tell our offerings, you can do the impossible. You can produce. When we give our offerings, we can give it with our heart as saying, you have purpose. Amen. Right now, if you have your offering in your hand, just tell your offering, you have purpose. Amen. We need to speak to our offering and tell it, you will fall on good soil and you will speak on my behalf. Amen. Sometimes we just put our offerings and we forget about it. Amen. Or we just give as if it is a duty to give. But we want to see our offering spring forth. Amen. So we ought to speak to it if we want to see it in action. Amen. Just as Jesus tells us to go and fulfill the needs of the kingdom of God, we should say to our offering, go out and fulfill the kingdom, the needs of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Just as you have, we should speak to our offering and say, just as you have come into my life as provision, I pray that you will go out and you will be provision for the house of God. Amen. You may want to speak to your seed and tell your seed, you have no hold on me. You have no chains on me. If you find it hard to give, you can speak to your offering and say, you have no hold on me. Amen. The Bible and Proverbs say that, your words can bring to life. Amen. So your words have power. You need to speak to the environment. If you want to change an environment, speak to it. If you want to change how we give, we should speak to it. Amen. We should speak to our offering. The second thing I want to say is, someone waiting at a gym to train, maybe it starts with a workout or, or 10 minutes. For some time and then from there the workout becomes 20 minutes, from there it becomes 30 minutes, from there it becomes an hour. So if this person wants to see growth or they want to see a change in their body, they can't stay on 10 minute workout forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the same with our tides, we can't stay on a 10 rand forever. Amen. But we should think about growth from there. Amen. Mm -hmm. We should speak to our wallets, we should speak to our hearts saying, I can't stay on 10 rand anymore. I want to grow. Amen? Amen. So let us just bow our heads and you can just repeat this declaration after me. If we are holding our offering in our hand, Amen? We can speak to our offerings and say, You have the power to blossom. You have no hold over me. I give you out of the joy of my heart. That you may be a joy to this house. You will speak for me when I cannot speak. You are a representation of my worship to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a representation of my faith. In the, Lord Jesus Christ. in the Lord Jesus Christ. You do not belong to me. You belong to the kingdom of God. Welcome to our broadcast this morning. My name is Pastor Ricardo Finn and I'm the pastor of FCI Rayma Family Church here in Newcastle, Northern Natal in South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so honored to have you joining us this morning for the broadcast and um, thank you for giving us an opportunity to share God's 
precious word with you and thank you for welcoming us into your home this morning. Before we go into the word of God, I'd like to encourage you, get your Bible ready, get a pen, get a notebook as we share God's precious word. Let us just open this morning's broadcast with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you this morning for a glorious opportunity to hear your precious word. According to your word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I pray this morning, O Lord, that as we hear your word, that understanding and enlightenment will come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you this morning that the seed of your word, Father God, will find a dwelling place, an abiding place in our hearts this morning. I thank you this morning, O God, that by your precious word, we will be transformed. Our minds will be renewed. Our lives will be changed. We'll never be the same again. Lord God, we thank you this morning for your precious word. In Jesus' precious name and the people of God said, Amen, Amen. Well, bless the Lord. Praise God. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I want to share with you this morning from the book of Psalms, chapter number 34. And I want to pose a question to you this morning. What would your answer be or what would your response be if somebody asked you, how would you love to see a good life? How would you love to live a life, a good life? and also experience a prosperous life, what would your response be? And I can uh, most certainly guarantee that your response would be a very loud affirmative, and that would be yes. Now in the book of Psalms, chapter number 12, um, sorry, chapter number 34 and verse number 12, David um writes and he poses the question he says who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good you know it's one thing to just live a life but not want to see good everybody wants to make it in life and everybody wants to have a good life everybody wants to live a long life and then he says in verse number 13 he says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Wow, praise God. That is the key. I want to just read from the New Living Translation, that very same portion of scripture. The New Living Translation puts it this way. It says, does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? My answer is yes. I'm sure your answer is yes too. He says, then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Wow. Keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. The book of Proverbs chapter number 18 tells us that the power of life and death lie in the tongue. And those who love it will eat the fruit of it. In other words, you will eat the fruit of of your words. If you speak bad words, you're going to get bad in your life. But if you speak good words, words that are sound, words that are wholesome, words that edify, then you will experience that in your life. Understand that words are seed. So whatever words you are sending out are the words that you're going to find manifesting in your life. Your life is a garden. Let me put it that way. Your life is a garden. My question to you this morning is, what are you sowing in your garden? Are you sowing weeds? In other words, are you sowing negative words? Are you making negative confession? Are your uh, meditation, your thoughts, are they all negative? And thus you find your words are negative. And then you find that all of a sudden, your life is filled with negativity. But you can change that this morning. David gives us the key here. He, David had a good life. He had a, he had a wonderful life. He lived a good life. And he had a prosperous life. And he's giving us the key here. He says, are you that person? Are you that individual that desires to live a good life and live a long and prosperous life? He says, then, 
If you want to do that, you've got to keep your tongue from speaking evil. In other words, don't speak what God doesn't speak. Don't say what God hasn't said. If God hasn't said it, don't say it. Don't speak it. Hallelujah. And he says, and your lips from telling lies. Let me share with you in the book of Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, we find God created man in his image and in his likeness. Then we find that God blessed man. And after blessing man, <clears throat> after blessing man, we find that God speaks to man. Let's just, let's just go there. Genesis 1 verse number 28. The Bible says, then God blessed them. Speaking of Adam and Eve. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. You see that? Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. <coughs> Hallelujah. You see? That is the Lord now. After creating man, he blesses man. And he speaks a word. He releases a word. Coupled to that blessing. And that is God's desire. And God's design and plan. For humanity, for you and I, for man, God's plan and desire is that, yes, we've been made in his image and in his likeness. He's conferred his blessing upon us, but coupled to his blessing, he's given us his word. And that word is for you to be fruitful and to multiply and to fill the earth. Hallelujah. Fill the earth with the knowledge of God. Fill the earth with the glory of God. And how do you do that? By speaking the word of God, speaking what God speaks. That is what you do, friend. That is how you sow in this wonderful garden of your life. By taking the word, taking the scriptures, giving voice to them and speaking them into your situation, speaking them into your life. Hallelujah. We find in Genesis chapter 3, watch this, verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord has made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden? Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden? God had said to Adam, and Eve, he said, you may eat of every tree in the garden, except that one tree in the midst of the garden. You shall not eat of it. Now watch what the enemy does. He says, as God said, you shall not eat of every tree. So now he gets the woman to like, you know, he's, he's now sowing doubt. The woman says to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of, if, of the trees. We may eat the fruit of the trees. Of the garden but of the tree of of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said you shall not eat of it nor shall you touch it lest you die verse 4 then the serpent said to the woman you will not surely die you see suggestion for God knows that in the day you eat of it your eyes will be open and you will be like God Knowing good and evil. Wow. Man was made in the image and likeness of God. And here we find the enemy gets Eve now to start questioning. In other words, he's trying to get a thought across that your life is not really complete. There's still something you miss. There's something that you're missing in your life. And because you're missing it, you are short in your life. With that thing, you are short. That's why he said to her, he says, you'll not surely die. For God knows that your eyes will be open and you'll be like God. So he's like trying to get that suggestion across that, hey, God hasn't created you to be, um, you, you know, to be like him. 
But the Bible makes it very clear that man was made in the image and likeness of God. So he gets it to question. Look at what Psalm 82 verse number 6 says. This is what the word of the Lord says. Psalm 82 verse 6. I said you are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Friends, you will find that the enemy will always come with suggestions. He'll probably come to you and tell you, oh yeah, you call yourself a child of God. You call yourself a believer. But look at this, look at that. No, don't look around you. Don't look at suggestion. Look at the word of God. Look at what God says concerning you. Hallelujah. Look at what the word of God says concerning you. He may come to you and tell you, yeah, but you're sick and you know... And, but the word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you were healed. So you are the healed of the Lord. You must see yourself as the healed of the Lord. See yourself as a child of God. Call yourself according to what God has called you in his precious word. The enemy will call you by your past. He'll call you by your mistakes. But God calls you his precious child. Hallelujah. Look at the book of Numbers chapter number 13. Chapter 13 of Numbers. God commands Moses to send 12 spies into the, into the land of Egypt, uh, um, into the land of Canaan rather, to conspire the land of Canaan. Canaan was a land of promise and God had, had promised them that they'll go into the land and they will dwell in the land. They will take possession of it. They'll dwell in it and the land will produce fruit for them. Now when they get there, they go into the land. They come back with a cluster of grapes. They come back with fruit from the land. And we find that 10 of them come back with a bad report. 10 of them have an evil report. But only 2 have the confidence to say, yes, indeed. There may be people there that are bigger than us, but with God on our side, we outnumber the people. We outweigh the people. With God on our side, we are the majority. Yes, and it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Hallelujah. In other words, God is about to come through for us. If God has said it, then that settles it. The land is ours. But we find that 10 of them began to stir up the people's hearts and cause the people to doubt. And that is what David was getting across here. That if you want to see good in your life, then don't speak your situation and don't speak your circumstances. Stop speaking your challenges. Stop speaking your shortcomings. Start speaking the word of God. When you start meditating on the word, when you read the word and meditate on the word, you begin to see your life the way God's the way God has shaped it and the way God has designed it to be. And you've got to dwell in the word. I just shared with you just now in Genesis, God gave Adam and Eve, he gave them a word to dwell in. And that word was a word for them to be fruitful, to multiply, fill the earth and to subdue it and have dominion. And that is the word of God. If you dwell in the word of God, you will do all of that that God had originally planned man, uh, a man to originally um, accomplish on the earth. But if you step out of the word, and how do you step out of the word? By giving in to suggestion, by giving in to negative thoughts, thoughts that are not in line with the word of God. If you want to know God's thoughts, get to the word of God and you'll see what God's thoughts are towards you. Praise God. In the book of John chapter number 8, verse 44, Jesus tells us, Satan is the father of lies. When Satan speaks, he speaks a lie. He speaks of his own. He cannot dwell in the truth. And how do you overcome him? You overcome the enemy by resisting him with the word of God. That's how, that's how Jesus overcame him when he came to tempt Jesus. Jesus kept on telling him, it is written, it is written, it is written. So that is my word to you this morning. That is God's word to you this morning. Stop focusing on your challenge. Don't speak your challenges or your shortcomings or your, uh, or your or the obstacles that you are facing. But begin to say, it is written. See what is written. 
Hallelujah. See, go and look and see what is written. And once you've seen what is written, speak what is written and start meditating on what is written. And as you do that, you'll find you'll get a, you, you'll become more conscious of who you are in Christ and what God has made available unto you in Christ Jesus. Praise God. First Peter chapter one, verse 23 tells us that we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God that watch it, the word of God that lives and abides forever. And we just read just now, who is the man that wants to live a life that is long and prosperous? And if you that man or you that woman, then my word to you this morning, God's word to you this morning is go for the word of God. Remember you are a product of, of the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm just reminded of something, you know, I just shared with you the power of life and death lies in the tongue. So if you can control your tongue, you can control the course of your life. You know, when someone is sick, um, they go to the doctor and one of the things a doctor would do is he would examine your mouth. He'd ask you to open your mouth. And very often you probably have experienced this. You get to the doctor and he says, go ah, and you go ah. And he takes a spatula and he places it on your tongue and he examines your mouth, you see. So maybe in your life, if things are not going you know, as you would really love them to go, the way you'd love them to go, then maybe you need to examine your words, the words that you've been speaking. So your wrong conversation will lead to wrong living and wrong life. But good conversation, wholesome conversation will lead to a long and a prosperous life. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that is it. Uh, that is my word to you this morning is that begin to speak the word of God. Don't speak your situation. Don't speak your shortcomings, but speak the word. Jesus says, when you knock, the door will be open. So you keep speaking, the word will come to pass. The word will come to manifestation. We've been designed, friends, designed to live in and live by the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In other words, what has been proceeding from God's mouth concerning your life? And that is what you are to speak. Praise God. So we've been designed to live in the word of God. Hallelujah. It's just like a fish. A fish has been designed to live in water, but you take a fish out of the water, it would die. And you take a child of God out of the word of God, you'll find that that child will dry up and that child will eventually die. That's right. So important to stay in the word of God. John 1.14 tells us, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word of God is full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. And the more you start getting of God's word into your heart, into your life, you'll find that grace begins to grow. Then you begin to see the grace of God and you begin to experience the grace of God. And then you begin to see the truth of God as it is truly revealed and manifested in the word of God. And that is found in the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. I want to share with you quickly as I just come to a close in the book of Ephesians chapter number 4 and Ephesians 4 and verse 29 praise God hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus Ephesians 4 verse 29 uh, the apostle Paul writes to the church at Ephesus he says let no corrupt word Watch here, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. 
Wow, praise God. The Message Bible puts it like this. I want to read just, you know, three different translations so you get a better picture. We just read the, the New King James. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. And the Message Translation says, watch the way you talk. In other words, count your words. Count them carefully. He says, watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps. Each word a gift. Consider every word that comes from your mouth a gift to others and a gift to yourself. Because with your words, you are either being a blessing to others and a blessing to yourself, or you are cursing others and cursing yourself. So watch your words very, very carefully. In the Amplified Bible, it amplifies it and it says it like this. It says, let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth. You see, let no foul or polluting language, no evil word, no unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth. Remember Jesus said, he said, by your words you'll be justified, by your words you'll be condemned. The Lord puts a great emphasis on the words that we speak. Words are very vital to us in our lives. Then he goes on to say, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others. You see that? The words that you're speaking, is it for the good and beneficial uh, spiritual progress of others? As is fitting to the need and occasion. So you see, your words have to be fitting to the need and the occasion. Hallelujah. There's a time for everything. There's a time for every word. The word of God says we should be ready in season and out of season. you got to have a word in season and a word out of season. Praise God. He says, yeah, as is fitting to the need and occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favor, to those who hear it. Hallelujah. That's a wonderful question to actually ask. Do your words bring a blessing and give grace? In other words, God's favor to those who hear it. Hallelujah. I just shared with you, the word of God is full of grace and truth. So the more you get of his word, the more his grace is revealed, the more his grace is revealed, the more of his grace you are able to distribute to others. And this is what, the, um, you know, this is a wonderful thought I would love to leave, with, leave you with this morning, is that you are a conduit of God's favor. You are a conduit of God's favor, a conduit of God's blessing. For God to get a blessing through and God to allow His grace to flow, you are the channel or means or way for conveying the grace of God and the blessing of God to others. Praise God. What a wonderful thought that is. And I just want to uh, encourage you this morning to really take the Word of God seriously and begin to speak the Word of God concerning your life. God created you in His image and in His likeness, and you are not short of anything. Everything that you desire for your life, everything that you need for your life is found in the Word of God. So, you know, you may encounter people in your daily life, and you find that many people are in need. And what are they in need of? They are in need for a, an encounter with the Word of God. 
and you are the channel. You are the means for them to encounter the word. So I want to encourage you this morning, have an encounter with the word of God. And once you have that encounter, you are able to take that word and allow others to encounter that word too. And I believe that is the reason why we were all created is so that we can have an encounter with the word of God, so that we can have an encounter with the son of God, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because in Christ Jesus, we realize our true, um, uh, our true potential and our true purpose for living is to know him, that we might know him and the glories of his resurrection. I believe that is the purpose that you and I have been created, that you and I have been born again. And I believe that, yes, God is going to do some phenomenal things in your life. You know, in the book of Numbers, we find that, um, uh, uh, um, you know, God gave the promise to the nation of Israel that they will possess Canaan. But we find that 10 of them uh, come back with a bad report and only two have a good report. And um, that was Joshua and Caleb. And God has promised us this year. He's given us his word. And he's declared that this year, 2021, will be the year of Shaphat. The year of God's favor. The year um, of God's blessing. God's increase. And God's abundance. And I believe we will experience that. I want to share something with you as I close this morning from the book of um, Amos chapter number 9 and hallelujah Amos chapter 9 and I want to read from verse 11 <clears throat> this is God's word to you this morning he says but also on that judgment day I will restore David's house that has fallen to pieces. If your life has fallen to pieces, God says, I will restore your house that has fallen to pieces. I'll repair the holes in the roof. Replace the broken windows. There may be places in your life that you find are broken. God says he will repair it. There may be windows in your life that have been broken. So much so that you really can't see which way you're going. God says, I'll replace the broken windows. In other words, God will give you vision. He says, fix it up like new. So God will fix your life up like new. He says, David's people will be strong again. In other words, God will renew your strength and seize what's left of enemy Eden. Hallelujah. So all that the enemy has tried to take from you, you're going to seize it. You're going to take it back. He says, plus, everyone else under my sovereign judgment, God's decree, he will do this. Verse 13, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. God says, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of another. Hallelujah. One thing fast on the heels of another. Blessing upon blessing. Grace upon grace. Favor upon favor. Hallelujah. He says you won't be able to keep up. You won't be able to keep up with what God is about to do and what God is going to do in your life. He says everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I'll make everything right again for my people Israel. You see that? You are his people. And God says in his word, I'll make everything right again. So in spite of what you may have messed up in your life, in spite of what you uh, uh, may have lost in your life or what has been broken in your life, God says, I'll make everything right again for my people Israel. They'll rebuild their ruined cities. You can rebuild your life this morning. 
They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. Hallelujah. How are you going to rebuild? By changing your language, watching your tongue, speaking the right things in season and out of season, speaking the language of the word of God and planting the word of God. He says they'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. So you're going to plant the word of God and you're going to start enjoying the word of God, what the word is going to do for you. He says, They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. So you're going to put the word of God to work in your life. He says, and I'll plant them. Plant them on their own land. They'll never again be uprooted from the land I've given them. Wow. God will plant you in his word if you will just come to him by faith. Come to him in faith and receive his word by faith. And, you know, establish yourself in the promises of God. Hallelujah. You will not be uprooted. Praise the Lord. And then he goes on to say, God, your God says so. Praise God. You have a God who loves you, a God who cares for you, a God who is mindful of you, a God truly who has visited you. And if you've been touched by this broadcast this morning and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, or maybe perhaps you once knew the Lord and you drifted, the Lord says, come back. Come back, come back. He is welcome you, welcoming you back um, into his arms this morning, welcoming you back into, you know, into his kingdom this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open, hallelujah. He's been knocking on the door of your heart during this broadcast. And if that's you this morning and you want to make things right with God and you say, yes, Lord, I'm that man. Yes, Lord, I'm that woman. You want to make things right with God. Let us pray this prayer of faith this morning and receive the Lord Jesus with childlike faith this morning and praise God, you'll become a new creation. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your son, according to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you this day. I invite you into my life and I ask you to be my personal Lord and Savior. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you now for your free gift of eternal life, which I receive this morning. I thank you, Lord Jesus, from this moment on. I am a new creation in you, Lord Jesus. Satan, you have no unsettled claims concerning my life. Because as of this moment, I am a child of the living God. I've received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I belong to him now. The blood of Jesus has washed away all my sin and removed all my failures, all my shortcomings from my life. From this moment on, I am a new creation, a child of the Most High God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, praise God. If you said that prayer, praise God, connect with us. The details are appearing up on your screen. Please write to us and share with us what the Lord has done for you. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you've received that, if you've prayed that prayer with us this morning, I want to congratulate you and welcome, me, welcome you to the family of God. I want to encourage you in your local area, 
connect with the local church in your area where they uh, um, read the Bible and they share the, the Word of God from the Holy Bible so that you can grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. Well, praise God. We are also excited to announce that as of next week, Sunday, the 14th of February, we will be commencing our services again, once again, in our auditorium as um, our president, President Ramaphosa, has allowed us once again to reopen our churches. So we just thank God um, for that announcement and we also look forward to coming together once again uh, in the house of God where we can fellowship. And I want to encourage you, if you're in the Newcastle area, come and join us. Come visit us at number 3 Bridger Street in Newcastle CBD. Number 3 Bridger Street in Newcastle CBD. That is where we're situated. We'd love to have you visit us. The details will appear on the screen. Come and visit us. And I want to just ask you, because the numbers are limited in the facility and because of the protocol that we have, we respect the government and we respect, um, you know, the guidelines that they've given us, you know, in order to run our services in terms of social distancing, etc. Uh, for those reasons, seating is limited. So we want to encourage you to send us an SMS or send us a text the, to the details appearing on the screen and register and let us know that you're coming for service so that we can register you and um, yeah and you can you can join us for service the details are on the screen so please do register registrations are open until Wednesday this week so we praise God thank you for joining us thank you so much we appreciate you we love you keep those prayer requests coming in we pray for you often and we thank God for you. Hallelujah. Just stretch your hands towards the screen as I release the final blessing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, his precious child, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your people that you grant them, Lord God, great success, uncommon favor, in the name of Jesus. May your blessing be upon them. I pray, Lord, O oh God, that you will prosper them this, this week, O oh God, that it shall be well with them, well with their families, well with their homes, well with their jobs, well with their workplaces, with their businesses, O oh God. I ask this in the name of Jesus. I thank you now, O oh Lord God, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore in Jesus' wonderful name. And God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying, we love you very much. We thank God for you. Goodbye, and God bless you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm.